Welcome to the bold analysis. I have read the recent trade war between Kenya and Uganda. And that trade war has bordered the milk politics, the milk import politics. Um, Uganda has actually put a three shillings levy on farm produce from Kenya uh, that are being exported to Uganda. And this is majorly Viazi. This is majorly Viazi, if I'm not wrong. This came after also Kenya also did some did pass some policy on uh, uh, banning the import of um, milk products from Uganda. Without that ban did not stay long, it was left at some point. And then some specific companies were actually banned from importing. So importing to Kenya and it was part of what was seen to protect the local industries. Then today there are two developments that have come. Number one is also Uganda is pursuing a route of uh, they have secured a deal, a uh, deal to drill their own oil in Uganda, and it's at an advanced stage. Museveni is speaking after meeting a multinational oil company, remarked that Uganda had harmonized crude oil supply and covered funding gaps with shareholders. Before we delve more into that, I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel and also remind you about um, this Dani Eda house. We are trying to, Dani here was part of our beneficiary in that um, April mission that we did in Kano, Bonde, Soi, Masogo area. And when we visited his, her house late in the night, we could not even access the house because the whole place was surrounded with water and is in a very, very devastating place. So what we decided that even after coming back, we decided that if we don't do something there, then maybe we shall have not done our mission. So we're heading back. I'm going back there on Wednesday. I'll be traveling on Wednesday just to try to get a solution. We must fix it. I've been speaking with the LA chief and some few locals there. And I just want to go and try to get her out of that place. So that's why I'm reaching out to you, for those who have not participated, and you can be willing to be part of this. Just anything you can get, any contribution from your end, will go a long way in ensuring that we rescue Dani from that place. Uh, she's The age is a bit advanced, but I believe that um, when someone is still alive, you cannot watch and just walk out because this person is old. I think old age is not a disability. Old age is actually a blessing. So even in her advanced age, we just want to make sure that we get a structure so that you floor a panaju, roughly plaster the walls in a good way, and make it a place that is a bit even waterproof. And at least kukinesha singie, siyeze kwamboka apo, and it will be able to be a blessing to us. So that's what we need to do um, there. But that trade war seems to have escalated into the aviation space, coming at a time after Kenya lost its CDF in a very controversial manner. Um, and Museveni have spoken about that. Um, he's saying this, and after signing the oil deal, this bit of this, what I was going to say, Hours after inking the deal with the multinational oil company, Museveni further announced Uganda had identified Uganda as a friendly nation to partner in aviation sector. On the oil sector, they found a new multinational company that they've been drilling oil. But he also announced that in the aviation sector, he's also identified a friendly nation to partner in that sector. The article continues to say, Museveni stated that his government was in advanced stages of increasing Uganda Airlines fleet for both per cargo and passenger aircraft. Increasing Uganda Airlines fleet 
for both cargo and passenger aircraft. This move will necessitate investment in fleet maintenance because they are increasing the number of fleets for cargo and passenger. There is a new demand for investment in fleet maintenance and Museveni explained that in the meantime, Uganda will only handle light maintenance of its aircraft. They are increasing but they will only handle light maintenance. So, where applicable, we hope to utilize existing capacity for maintenance service in brotherly countries like Ethiopia until our fleet grows to allow us to have it done fully in, in Uganda. Kenya was further isolated by the East African Community Member States. What is happening here is this, and I wanted to get it because I've, I've also tried to ask a journalist from Uganda. What I'm saying, Uganda, are, uh, after getting, after that uh, business, uh, after that oil deal with a multinational company, they're also boosting the aviation sector. So they're buying more airplanes for both cargo and passenger. Ugandan airline is nile nyegura litunyanga. And because of that, they need to have on maintenance, they will be doing light, but because it, they cannot be enough, they have dropped Kenya and now picking Ethiopia. Why? The mistrust on aviation space. It's coming at a time when we actually lost our CDF in a plane crash. I don't know whether um, you can fathom, uh, you can actually absorb that move because it points out to something there's some bit of discomfort that uganda is seeing in us and in a sense kenya was isolated by the east african member state isolated in that maintenance and in fact how would you allow a country that gave a helicopter to its cdf a faulty helicopter flew its CDF in a hold in a faulty helicopter and that helicopter went. How do you trust that country? And that is why I think personally said that um, if we are genuine, we needed to handle some few things. And one of them was that we needed to be very careful on how we take this issue of them and how we handle this issue of um, um, of Ogola's death. It was not usual, it was not normal, as much as state powers would want to show that it is something normal. But it has so many effects, even beyond our borders. It's not only locally here that people may want to ask questions. But it also has effect beyond our borders. The security of our country. The integrity of our aviation space. Because it borders so many things. It borders so many things. So that is a question that we really need to answer. And so I want to interpret. Mm. Uh, Uganda is our trading partner is actually our leading trading partner. Why are we arriving at that? There are things that Uganda might be seeing. And what I'm seeing, number one, is suspicion on the safety of our aviation equipment. If we cannot maintain ours, look at startling data of eight, more than 12 aircraft have been falling the last one year, five from the military. It's been going on. So that data is one that is very worrying and it's painting a picture that uh, maybe the competence, our competence on craft maintenance is in doubt. Is in doubt. I am, I am, I still hold this position and I agree with what Masha Gada is saying. A report will not come out that someone was planning to kill the city. Don't expect that. That is not going to be there. But 
looking at the simplistic life of the CDF, this is a man that might have, have planned I'm going to West Pokot. And my official helicopter I'm supposed to use has been taken by politician X or politician Y. And because of that, what does it mean? What, 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 what does it mean? I'm a simple man. I don't care. I can use any, even if you give me this pro box in the and Tainda. So he decides to use a, a chopper that may not be of his class, but because he's a simple man, he decides to use that chopper. And not even that someone is even planning to eliminate, but by coincidence, the people that were maintaining that chopper are there some river road guys in military gears, in military regalia. Yes. This is Kenya. Everything is possible. So, just a victim of circumstance. The other thing I'm seeing is, I think Uganda is reading a full play in the city of death. We might not read, but even our neighbors, I'm telling you, even our neighbors might, might be reading more than what catches the eye. The other third aspect is existence of peripheral enemies. I think I've mentioned about this. Kenya has many peripheral enemies. And last I think it is just keen on the quality that we offer. The quality of our equipment is already at stake. Thank you. In Madri, in Madri all through, so I want to see what is here. You check in Madri. So she's another one. Just so I try to give her. This is late, and this is around seven thirty. Yes, this is her. I took a lot of food. I took a lot of food. I took a lot of food. I so <laughs> Gonna have a a Thirty <laughs> Kinyo <laughs> Ya kaja ko de kwa. O 
So she's saying so that, that hako mekula since morning and yes hata tukikuja tumepata kama alikuwa shafunga nyumba amelala so we just thank god for what we've done and that is what she's saying in the law chami kata chami kata na ndio ara miki chak mado cha kumnaitiro eh aino kama tiro oh nyaka twaki nya male kama chak kama dunu kinto cheo mhm aba mukati modu ipi Look at the, yeah, the floor. Maji mengia guys. So maji meja huko. Throughout if we check. Maji meja. Ongea watu mama. Tutini ingine ilo.